The family of Evan Gershkovich is speaking out in an exclusive interview with The Wall Street Journal. Gershkovich, who is a journalist with The Journal, was arrested last month in Russia and charged with espionage. The U.S. government denies the, uh, the accusation and is calling for his immediate release. Senior video producer for The Wall Street Journal, Shelby Holliday, spoke to Gershkovich's parents about his detention. It's what's one of the American qualities that we absorbed. Be optimistic, believe in happy, happy ending. That's uh, where we stand right now. But I am not stupid. I understand what's involved. But that's uh, what I choose to believe. Did you ever talk to him about what could happen uh, as a journalist in Russia? Uh, no, uh, but I trusted him. I trusted his judgment. Of course, it makes things more difficult for me now because I, I feel, feel that I've failed in some way as a father. And the Wall Street Journal's Shelby Holiday is here in studio with us to talk about this. Shelby, it's good to see you. Um, what did you discuss with Evan's parents about how they're doing right now? Well, overwhelmed would be the obvious word. There's just so much going on, but there are a lot of things. They're devastated that their son is behind bars. They're frustrated at this unfair circumstance. Um, they're frustrated they can't talk to him. They're also very hopeful. Like, as his mom just said, she is choosing to be optimistic. We talked a lot about the American qualities that they absorbed when they emigrated from the Soviet Union. And she said, there's this very special thing about living in America when the community rallies around you. And she, they deeply feel that support. And they feel they, they're choosing to be optimistic and believe in a happy ending. So, I mean, they're also getting calls from President Biden and governors and the State Department. And there's just so much going on. And I think... At the end of the day, they feel a bit of a loss. They want to talk to their son. They haven't been able to do that. Yeah, you know, it was really painful to hear just you know, the hope, but also a mother talking about, you know, knowing what goes on in, in those circumstances and also hearing a little bit about their, their family story. I mean, they come from survivors of the Holocaust. Yes. They immigrated to the United States from the Soviet Union. Tell us a little bit more about, you know, just the family and what it meant for them, the efforts that he put into getting to that position. To right, that right. The Russia. family's incredibly strong. So both of his parents are Jewish. Um, they have fam they lost family during the Holocaust. They had family perish during Joseph Stalin's brutal repression. They've been through a lot, but his parents in 1979 chose to leave the Soviet Union separately. They didn't know each other, but they left in this wave of immigration. Um, they came to, they ended up in New York City. They met at work and they loved America. They really embraced being Americans, yet they held on to their Russian heritage. Mm -hmm. And they raised Evan and his sister Danielle, speaking the Russian language, celebrating Russian traditions. The mom said, you know, it's one thing to speak Russian at home, but she was really dedicated to teaching them how to read and how to write. She yeah. said it was hard work. And it was something that Evan thanked her for later. Um, we also talked about when Evan moved to Moscow to be a reporter. So, of course, he grew up with this Russian heritage, but he really embraced this Russian background and his roots when he moved over there. He read tons of books. He got immersed in the culture and really just fell in love with it. You know, what I find remarkable and inspiring is that despite uh, having had parents that were born under a repressive regime, which the Soviet Union was, um, he chose to do what is probably the most um, freest expression of a career that you can have, which is to be a journalist, and to do it in a country that is still, by all accounts, repressive. Yep. You had an opportunity to speak to Evan's sister about his reporting on Russia, and we want to play a little bit of that. What was it like for you to read about Russia through his reporting? I'm just in awe of him. Um, uh, we're, we're so different. I'm a homebody. He's a thrill seeker, an adventurer. <laughs> I can't even relate to, to, to him sometimes in the, in the life he leads. Um, as as a reporter, I think the America reports on on Russia sometimes in a way that makes it seem like a a pretty terrifying cold place. He was really passionate about um, showing other sides to Russia, the nuance and and the, and the beauty of it. And that's what I find so remarkable. All of us who are uh, reporters who have parents that were born in other countries always feel as if we can tell a different side mm -hmm. of the story. What we're talking about is Vladimir Putin and his regime. That is not the Russian people. And that's yeah. what Evan tried to do. And in our piece, his mother said, and as we were talking, you know, Evan loved Russia. And his dad said he still does. Mm. He loves the Russian people. And he really did try. And he felt like he could be a bridge to this, this country that is increasingly distant from us and misunderstood. 
And he wasn't just there to report on the regime and its decision to invade Ukraine. He was there to talk about what the Russian people, how they yeah. felt. And he published some really beautiful pieces about dissenters who were doing any little thing that they could to oppose the war. So he was this beautiful bridge in a journalistic sense, teaching yeah. all of us in the West more about Russia. But he was also a bridge for his parents. They went back and visited him and just sort of reconnected with this country that they had left. Did they tell um, you the last thing that or the last time they spoke with him? We talked about the last time they were texting. So the mother spoke with him on the Monday before he was he was detained. He was detained on a Wednesday. She had kind of some spidey senses that she was just uncomfortable. She wanted to check in, see if he was okay. She was uncomfortable with, um, I don't want to say uncomfortable. She was very proud of his reporting, but he had a very detailed, amazing piece about Vladimir Putin and his inner circle mm. in December. And she said that made her worried for his safety. So she checked in with him. Um, she didn't say what they said, but she checked in with him Monday, and then on Wednesday he was detained. The last time they saw him was at Danielle's wedding in the U.S. Have they spoken to him? Uh, what, what kind of communications have they had with him? So I, I talked to them on Monday. I, I don't know what's happened since then, but they have not been able to speak directly yeah. with him. Um, but they're encouraged that the lawyers have been able to meet with him, and they were very grateful that the State Department designated Evan as wrongfully detained. That unlocks a lot of resources and hopefully will help give his case a boost. So. And hopefully them some hope. Thank yeah, you. it did. It really did yeah. give them a lot of hope. We were there when we got the notification of that ah. um, designation. So, wow. yeah. a good moment to witness. It was very sure. yes. Yeah. It was a lovely moment. Great family. Shelby Holiday, thank you. Thank you for having me. And you can rewatch. You can watch the entire interview with Evan Gershkovich's family at wsj.com.